Yo, what's going on guys? Today's video is going to be a quick guide on, well, not even a guide at this point. It's going to be a tier list video based on the importance of each Eternal in the game currently uh, with the newest upcoming event, Seeds of Redemption. You do have the option of picking either any Eternal to recruit. If you go down here, you can see that you can play the event to recruit an Eternal. Or if you already own an Eternal, you can pick that Eternal and then instead of getting the Eternal, you get a gold bar instead. Keep in mind though that if you recruit a new Eternal, you will get the 50 star fragments used for unlocking their fifth star. Now, at the very beginning, let me recommend that people who do not have every Eternal, I highly recommend you pick up an Eternal you do not have as Picking up an Eternal will allow you to skip a lot of the farm that is required for the Eternals. Example being the crystals, the worlds, the skill leveling, the weapon, um, a bunch of random weapons and, and the little items from like the side events and stuff like that and the side quest. So you do skip quite a big grind and eventually you would want to get every Eternal as you do get a special buff for the Eternals if you acquire all of them. You get a like a uh, it gives you 10% charge bar, a 10% unique attack boost, and I believe um, a little bit more health. I actually don't remember too well though, but it's right here. So you get uh, quite a you get stats and you get charge bar to turn up to start a battle. It's very core in a lot of one turn setups that revolve around Chrysor. So if you don't have them all, I highly highly recommend picking up one you do not have. As for which one to pick up, we're gonna get to that in a minute. However, I will mention that this is the end of the uh, Guild Wars that we just currently have. Tell me how you guys perform during it. I'll show you guys my score here. Um, I got to clear the tokens and stuff, but I wanted to get this video out first. But just tell me how it went with you guys. Uh, I went 4-0, so pretty decent. Um, we do have Water Guild Wars coming up, so I do plan on doing um, some videos on that as well. With Magna Water, I have the grid for it now, so... I ended up farming it for the Proud Quest, so I can do some stuff with that. So expect that in the future, it should be EX Plus and stuff. Keep in mind that the Opus for my Magna Water is Ultra Limit Break, so just keep that in mind. And um, there's one more thing I wanted to mention, is that we do have some new weapons coming into the game called Astral Weapons. If you buy the DLC for, um, the DLC for Grand Blue Versus with the newest character, um, Beezlebub, I think his name is, or I don't, I think I don't remember his name, but, um, you can pick one of these weapons here. Uh, it's promotional. It will be, you will be able to attain them later. If you guys want to hear my opinions on them, you can just tell me, uh, if you guys want to hear it. So, and then I'll make a video on it. But with that, let's get on to the tier list. Now, before I start this video, I do plan on ranking the four stars first in terms of importance. When you unlock these Eternals, they will be coming at 4-star, so generally it's where you'll be having them until you take them to 5-star. I will also be doing a tier list for 5-star for people who want to think more ahead into the future, and I'll talk about each unit individually and why they're placed in each tier. Keep in mind, this is my opinion. You may have a difference of opinion, and that's fully understandable. This is coming from my standpoint and where I look at each character and how they fit. Now, um, other than that, I think that's good enough and let's get to it. So starting with the, oh, we're going in order by the way, by their number. So their placement will be placed by their number. So for example, the first one we'll be looking at is Uno and we're looking at Uno four star. Um, personally, where I feel Uno was four star it falls into his D tier. Reason being that he doesn't have anything that's completely unique to him anymore. Uh, he has very pitiful damage. He doesn't get any of his buffs rather until a five star, which is mainly his stamina buff, which is a pretty good stamina buff, but um, he doesn't get anything really. He has a mode bard cut on his Ogi, which is kind of lackluster. It's not that great. His skill one is a pretty high damaging nuke, which is pretty good for low ranking players. Uh, however, it only activates an overdrive and it can hit a decent amount of damage. Um, it has a high multiplier if you hit it in overdrive but generally it's not a big deal breaker in my opinion. His skill two is a substitute, basic substitute. There's many units that have that in water, units like Romeo and stuff like that. So not that big. And his unique skill that used to be unique, 
it's it's a hundred percent phalanx. This is a very big skill. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's now becoming a more common skill with units like Gotcha Pin acquiring it hundred percent phalanx. So Uno's one niche is no longer a niche anymore. Therefore, he doesn't really have a lot of use right now um, as a four star. Unfortunately, uh, he's pretty much overshadowed by a lot of the standard Gotcha units, mainly like Lily, honestly. Next unit we'll be looking at is Song. Song, I'll be putting an A tier. Um, personally, you can place her S tier as well. Uh, depending on how valuable you look at Bahamut high level hosting. Um, personally, I I look at Bahamut high level hosting as a very big thing. And for that, I could put her S tier as well. Now, the reason that she's S tier is because her one unique ability, which is Paralysis. However, she's not the only character in her element that has it. So you do have another option in Satori. Problem with Satori is that she does have a quite a, uh, a hassle to get to her paralyzed. You have to Ogi three times with her. Song only requires one Ogi and then she's able to paralyze, which is a lot more uh, accessible, especially in faster fights. So Song four star is definitely still good for this hosting your Bahamut high levels. Not to mention she still has depravity, which is a strong debuffing um, skill, applying many debuffs with helps in fights such as Gilbert. Four star song is viable in Gilbert because he can allow you to hit the five debuff minimum easily and you don't need a five star her. However, you want to five star her because she doesn't have a ton of damage at four star, but she does have a mechanic that completely counters Gilbert's mechanics. So, um, and if you get lucky, you can get the multi attack rate down, charm, blind, stuff like that. Her skill one is pretty much useless at four star though. So you don't, you won't be getting much value out of that, and her Ogi is is uh, mean just for the paralyze. So personally, A tier. Next we have Sarsa, our first S tier here. The reason see S tier is because at this point in the game, generally if you're still using four star Eternals, I'm gonna assume you don't have great characters. So I'm looking at more of a newer player experience. Her ability at that point, generally you probably aren't farming uh, Magna two and the Bunker Raids. So when you're not farming Magna 2 and Bunker Raids, which have a blue chest system, blue chest is a system where you have to acquire a certain amount of honors. The more honors you get, the higher chance the blue chest will appear, and these blue chests do contain valuable weapons. Now, when you don't have raids like that, and you're farming like your regular Magnas, your uh, Magna high levels, your Odin tier raids like Odin, uh, Garuda, stuff like that. Sarsa does have some value there. And just one punching the raid really quickly and getting a quick damage burst. Not only that, she does have valuable assets in terms of doing cold uh, co-op slime quest with her ground zero. And then she can also perform pretty decently in the lower tiers of Arcarum. Um, once you get the expert, it does cut your plane damage in half. Therefore, you will have a harder time uh, killing it in one turn in one shot with her, but she can still perform really well at the lower tiers. And generally, I'm assuming people here looking at this type of video aren't at like the point where they are uh, end game or mid game, they're more like early game. So Sarsa does have a lot of value for early game players. Uh, so that's my opinion on her right now. Her Ogi's not that great though. Uh, she doesn't really get anything on her Ogi. Her main gimmick is this using her ground zero. Next, we're on the Quatre. Quatre is C tier. Um, the one thing Quatre really has is a gravity and a delay. Gravity is pretty great. Um, it helps a ton if in certain fights where you want to avoid getting Ogied. Keep in mind, though, that uh, gravity is, while it's great, it's not that great in content when you happen to run into triggers back to back. So um, it's a great skill, but uh, it's not the uh, most broken skill in the game or anything. And then he also has delay on Ogi, which helps you from stop getting Ogi. But this also does not stop triggers. So keep that in mind. If you're going into content with a lot of triggers, that Quatre does lose a lot of his value. But for anything else, he does have some value. And he has a very RNG based mechanic in his skill one, allowing him to hit some decent debuffs like paralysis and uh, delay, blind. So his skill one can come in clutch sometimes but it's not consistent. His skill three does have the extension debuff, I'm gonna fall, the extension buff for one turn, 
which is cool. Um, you can combine it with, with summons like Freyr, Bahamut. Uh, not the uh, Bahamut Oki CA damage boost, but the attack boost. So it, it can be useful at times, but uh, generally it's not as strong as it used to be. Uh, however, if you're at a really low rank, you can kind of do some real cool shenanigans with Quatre and Korwa. While once you get to the point where you start capping without that, um, you don't need to. But at a very, very, very low rank, you can get away with it and do decent damage for your rank. So that's why I feel like he's still C tier. Uh, not too amazing or anything, but uh, he's okay. Now we have Fun Fun. Fun Fun's in the same place as C tier as Quatre. Her heal is decent, and um, she does have the ability to clear all debuffs on her scale too. Her heal is about 3k ish, uh, more with EMPs and more investment. So it's not a bad heal by any means. But you do have units in her LE that she has to compete with, like Sophia. Sophia does a ton as well, just like Fun Fun, but Sophia does have a revive. So uh, Fun Fun has a auto revive, which is great if you know how to plan around it. But generally, just auto reviving one unit, um, unless you know for a fact that's the only unit that's going to die, it doesn't make or break the run generally. So, and she does have a dispel on her Ogi, which is okay. Um, it's not that bad actually. It helps in content like Anubis where you want to dispel buffs and stuff, so. She's okay unit, um, nothing that's game breaking or anything. Uh, a lot of these four star Eternals aren't that great because they gotta keep in mind that these units are 2015 units. So, they're not gonna be like game breaking when we're in 2020, when these where new units that just come out are just, just full powerhouses now. So just keep that in mind. Now, the next unit we have is six. Now, I was kind of reluctant on ranking six and I honestly don't know where to put him. Because I haven't used six four star in about three years and his kit got overhauled with his recent rebalance in 2019, I don't know where to put him. Personally, you could put him between around B to A, I feel. He does have good damage now. Um, his damage is, is a little bit lowered from his passive. It used to be like a 500% damage modifier. Now it's about 210. But he does have good skills now where he can get the amplified buff on his skill 1. He has the counter system on his skill 2. And hostility up. His Oki is only mirror image at a 4 star. He doesn't get the other self buff. But even this mirror image does work pretty well if used correctly. Um, you will have to know what the boss does. Because you don't want to use his skill 2 on a, a AoE Oki that hits everybody. Then you won't really get much benefit out of it. So using him at four star will require a little bit more knowledge of the game, which is not too bad. And he does have petrified on his skill three. So he didn't get the accuracy down until five star. So he's still a good unit. He does take a little bit of time to ramp up to really start doing good damage, especially if your grid is weaker. So let's keep that in mind that he does take a little bit of time to ramp up. But once he gets ramped up, he can really do a good amount of damage. Next we have Siete. Siete is a powerhouse unit now um, becoming a really good attacker a lot less maintenance on his skill one thanks to his recent rebalance as well in 2019 the only reason he has a higher value than uh let's say six is because siete has the ability to be very viable in otk setups does his does some standing there has a 50 percent ogi damage boost to wind allies rest in peace the uh all allies but um it's a really big thing, even if he doesn't have the cap up, just his passive there. And a lot of this game is just about bursting. So because he's even viable for bursting at a four star, I feel like he's A tier, could even be S tier, um, depending. Uh, if GW was coming up, I'll probably put him S tier. But because we just had to win GW, I think A tier is fine. Um, it's replaceable though, but he's a very strong unit just for Ogi bursting. Um, but... That's about it, really. Uh, his skill 3 does give you another full chain, which is really nice. When you want to do a 2-chain combo with him, it's very viable and very quick. Now we have Octo. Octo is a B tier. Um, he's another good unit for OTKs. Uh, Earth has a ton of good OTK units, though. So even Octo 4 stars, while he does good damage, um, Earth is one LD where you got a, a lot of different options you can really access with, with them. So... It's not that bad. Um, however, he does have a big damage drop at a 
as a four star because he didn't have the five star stats and everything. But you can still perform well with doing OTKs with him. So it's an okay unit. Um, if you're looking to boost up your earth a little bit, just for the uh, EX plus ability. Other than that, though, and he doesn't have as high damage as this, say, six and Siete. But just because he's viable for EX plus as a four star, he does will fall into B tier. However, if you're not using him for EX+, plus, then he would fall down to C tier. Now we have Neo. Neo is uh, B tier. Um, her buffs are still decent even as a 4 star. Um, but they're not as powerful as the, say, the other buffers in her LE being Wind. You have units like Monkey, Rosetta, Lesia, Kokoro. Um, these units have... I would say even better buffs than Neo. The biggest thing that really pushes her up to B tier is Comatose. Um, even as a four star, Coma is a very strong skill. And if the boss does not resist it, it can pretty much shut down a lot of bosses in the game. Unfortunately, Coma has becoming uh, more resisted in newer content thanks to its overpoweredness. Their way of countering it is just by completely just making it resisted. So it does make her lose a lot of viability as a four star. Um, her buffs, if they were a little bit better, I would say she's a little bit better, but her buffs are pretty mediocre in 2020. So, unfortunately, she can't really go that much higher. And she does have the tuning on her skill 3. And then we have the final S tier being Escher. Um, Escher 4 star is mainly used just for her boost to drop rate. Her, I honestly don't remember how her skills work. <laughs> as a four star, because I have not used her in a very long time as a four star, but this her bounty system is such a big thing, especially as the lower rank. The lower your rank is, the more value you get out of Esther. Esther actually loses a ton of value once you get to that higher end content, because you get more guaranteed drops and blue chest. The two things Esther's passive do not affect is guaranteed drops, something like you Baja high level, where your drops are guaranteed, and then in um, Bahamut High Level, not Bahamut, in uh, Magna 2 and Bunko Raids, where your drops are uh, coming from the blue chest. The blue chest is not affected by extra drop rate passive. Because the blue chest is not affected by it, her value does go down a little bit. So keep that in mind that as a lower rank and a newer player, your value for Esther is higher. So I would even put her SS tier, to be honest. You know, because of how valuable she is at the lower rank. So that's my opinion. For people who do not have Esther, it's probably your best bet is to go for her. Um, afterwards, you probably want to go for Sarsa if you don't have her too. Song, if you want to start getting into Bahamut high level hosting. And uh, Siete is not bad for wind if your wind is lacking. However, I wouldn't prioritize Siete because wind GW is passed. So unless you're a wind main, um, He's not that important right now. But that's about it for the four stars. That covers pretty much my opinions on them. As far as I mentioned for the gold bar, I would only go after the gold bar if you have every eternal. The reason being that you skip a lot of the grind for recruiting these eternals. However, I do understand if players don't want to make an eternal because they want to get the gold bar for an opus. That's also viable. If you plan on making an opus, then go ahead, get the gold bar. But uh, just, that's how I feel about it. With that, let's get on to the five stars. Now, originally I was against making the five star tier list, but I feel that there are a couple players who probably are looking to the future and they probably want to know which five star turnouts are the ones that are worth going after right now in the game currently. So I thought I'll give my thoughts on that as well. You may have noticed that I've lowered the tiers uh, to only three. I feel each five-star eternal, while they're not game-breaking, um, some of them, they all are in a decent usable comp right now in the game, and I'll explain which comp works with each eternal, but I feel like they're all usable in the game right now, some more than others, but uh, uh, that's how I feel about them. And we're going to be starting off again with Uno, going in the same order as we did last time. Uno is a B tier, most commonly used right now in the one turn setup with the Uno Vajra Yoda comp with either Rising Force or uh, 
can go, depends. Uh, if you're using Rising Force though, I recommend not running the Zeno, um, and you probably end up running the Cloth Weapon, because they don't stack the Zeno Stamina and Uno Stamina buff. But it's a very strong comp. I used it personally for when I do Yubaha normal. Um, if I'm lazy and I don't have strike time, I end up using it. Uh, it's a quick burst comp. It's about 200k on just one click. It's not bad. The same thing for when I'm doing Fa. Uh, it's a really quick burst. I just want a bony toe and just be lazy and then somebody else MVP at the rate. So it's still viable, not to mention he's still useful for things like solo Fa. Still a good unit for that, so. Um, he can also use it for normal far runs as well. But that's his main purpose. His Fleeting Spark has been kind of neutered, unfortunately. A lot of newer content is doing AoE autos, and unfortunately Uno auto, um, counter system does not work against AoE autos, so that's a, that's a neg against them. Um, but when he does get the ability to get his counters off, he can pop out a lot of damage and be a really good damage dealer as well, so. And he's, his Ogi is actually pretty good for full auto. The only thing I recommend, or my fault, the only thing I will mention is that on full auto, he will activate his substitute and his phalanx on the same turn, because they're both six turn cooldown. So because of that, it kind of hurts him a little bit. But um, his shield and stamina buff on full auto is not bad at all. And it's pretty good, um, provided that the boss does not auto too hard. Unfortunately, a lot of the newer content, the boss is auto 2k naturally so his barrier will be gone in one a turn so it's a good thing and a bad thing depending on what you're doing next unit we'll be looking at is song five stars he's a tier um bahamut high level queen pretty much any host generally is looked to have this unit as a mentor unit because it's just so strong to have the boss paralyzed from 50 onwards to death for about two minutes Extending paralysis is too powerful. Um, it's a lot, why a lot of dark bosses now just completely are immune to it because I mean, two minutes of paralysis is ridiculous. <laughs> no matter how you look at it, two minutes of paralysis is so outrageous that I mean, that's all I gotta mention. Um, she does have a strong crit buff on her Ogi now when you get her five star, so it does help. It's a hundred percent crit buff and a 50% damage boost, so it's not bad. Her skill one is still useless. Her skill two gets a no change, and with her skill four, she gets an extension for all debuffs on the boss, so. One thing with her extension though is that with multiple song five stars in the raid, they will not overlap, and you only get to extend all debuffs one time, so having many song five stars in the same raid is generally not a good thing because you don't get any value out of it. But when she does work, mainly at Bahamut high level, she freaking worked and she's good. But that's pretty much her main value right now. You can even put her S tier, honestly, um, for that value alone. I take a lot of value in things that can give you back an investment. So you invest in the song 5 star and you start hosting Bahamut high level daily because you can paralyze it. And then eventually you get back a gold bar. Therefore, you you got something out of making her. That's how I look at it. So it, you can definitely put her S tier. The next thing we're looking at is Sarsa. Sarsa is A tier. Um, the reason being that by generally in this point in the game, if you have ability to make five star GW characters, you're probably getting to the point where you're starting to farm your magnitudes and your uh, bunkle raids because those raids have blue chest mechanics. Sarasa's ability to one punch does go down a little bit for me. Um, so that's how I feel about her. She's still a decent unit for bringing out an Invoker. Uh, evoker, my fault. So if you bring in the Evoker, that's not bad. She does get a defense down on her scale three as well. So it's, it's pretty decent. Um, used pretty commonly. Um, however, you do have other options like Christmas Rackham or Ayer as well. So it's not unique to her, but she does have the ability to apply a debuff before she dies, which is not bad, not bad. Uh, she can also be useful in Fa, kind of. I wouldn't really recommend using her though, as she does get a t almost 2 million plane damage on her OG. It's 1,999,998. This is very important to know because when doing Fa, 
you do require 2 million plane damage, so you will have to have either another source of damage over time from either like poison, burn, or something, or do an extra little bit of plane damage along with her second Ogi to hit that point. But she's still a good unit as well for Emity users if you're going that build, um, becoming a little bit more popular in Nightmare 150 because of how strong it is. Um, Garrison is a uh, very strong mechanic and a midi gives you a ton of damage boost. So she could be useful in that in the future. We haven't had a Nightmare 150 with Earth yet. So there's no saying it she's not useful for it, but uh, it can be useful and it has been doing pretty well with GW. The next unit we'll be looking at is Quatre four, uh, five star. Quatre five star is still a decent unit for Fa. Pretty much your main go-to speller, and he can also gravity the boss, which is a big thing. He has AOE gravity on his skill too, which helps a lot because the wing and the main body both get gravity rather than just having one and sometimes screwing up your flow. He still has the delay on Ogi, but instead he becomes a walking GW dagger. Even though I feel this is a little bit outdated, hopefully uh, they do end up giving him a better Ogi effect. Cause this is GW dagger a little bit low. But it's still useful for giving your team a high multi-attack rate. His skill 1 has one of the best debuffs in the game. Forfeit if you're able to get it. It allows you to bypass the natural 50 attack and defense cap. Which is a really big thing. However, it's RNG debuff. So it's not reliable. But when it, you do hit it, you will notice a massive difference in speed. And in your damage output. Not to mention the damage you're taking when it's up. So it's a very, it's like one of the best debuffs in the game if you can land it, but it's not something that's going to happen all the time. And his skill four, this allows you to reapply a lot of his skills, his skill one or skill two, which is okay. Um, it's a good way to try to force out his forfeit debuff mainly, um, or to, to spam the spells if you need it. That's his main use right now. Next, we're on to the fifth Eternal, which is five star Fun Fun. She's another A tier unit. Um, her heal is extremely high at this point now. Once she gets to five stars, she heals about four to five K. With a good investment, she can heal up to seven K. I think I've, I've hit nine K with a 30% heal rank on her skill one. So with some good investment in her, you can really hit some really high healing amounts. So keep that in mind. Not to mention, she does have a very, very unique 100% uh, debuff resistance. At some point, this is actually better than Veil. The problem with Veil is that if you take two triggers back to back and the first trigger debuffs you, you're going to lose your Veil. Therefore, going into the second trigger, you will get debuffed. However, Fun Fun's buff is for three turns, meaning that if you go into one trigger, get debuffed, and then you go into the trigger right after that, you'll still have the 100% debuff resistance, so you won't get debuffed, which is a really big thing. However, it does have some downsides to it. Just like Veil, certain target effects from like the Gilbert battle, the Gilbert Proud quest, where it applies a target debuff, and from Ultimate Bahamut high level, from the beginning 15%, they, those debuffs can still go through her uh, resist, so you will not be completely immune while it's up. Besides that, though, it's still pretty good. Not to mention she has one of the best skill forts in the game in terms of defense. She gives your team a full heal and a, uh, uh, well, I forgot the name of it. <laughs> she gives your team a full heal and a lethal hit buff. So it'll keep any unit that almost dies to one health in one hit. So it's pretty good. Um, just the full heal alone, it's massive. Anybody who's a monkey, you would know. Once you start getting a ton of health, like 30k, 40k, 50k, the full heal is pretty massive. So it's a good skill. Um, not to mention that I forgot that her skill one does give stamina buff, which is a really good buff when you need uh, some good damage. Next, we on to the first S tier of this list, which will be six, five star. He's a monster. Um, his skill one giving 60% bonus damage now at five star. His six counters from his skill two, hostility up, and it combined well with his Ogi now that gives him a other self buff. 
while other stuff's still effective for that turn whenever he does the take damage he won't take any damage for the turn and it lasts along until he takes damage so it's a very good combination where he's 16 just dodge every pretty much every ogi and then counter a ton of damage and his skill 3 has actually down as well it's not too reliable from my experience and it does have a hard time landing but when it does land and it does activate this free it's free extra value in a package that's already completed. And he does have a counter system now where if the boss does a special attack, he will counter and does free skill damage six times, by the way. So pretty good character. He, he has it all right now. Um, go to dark DPS. Uh, so pretty good, pretty good. The next thing that we'll be looking at is yet a five star. He's another S-tier unit. Surprise, surprise. Both rebalanced units are S-tier, in my opinion. Using CFA 5-star, um, while he did lose a little bit of value in all elements, where he cannot no longer be used for EX+, and like water, fire, and other comps, what he gets now is a ton of damage from himself and a pretty good buffer. So, And he had low maintenance now, which is a really big thing. The fact that we don't have to hit CFA skill 1 every turn allows him to be a little bit more faster and to put out more damage. Not to mention he's just naturally now a hard hitter. So he's a lot more easy to use and he can do quite a bit of damage, which is a really big thing. His skill 3 don't get a change or anything, but it didn't really need it. It was mainly his skill 1 that needed to change the most in my opinion. And... They delivered with his now skill one, where he can also desync his Ogi a lot easier, allowing you to not have to worry about chaining Ogis too much, which is a really big thing for speed. His skill four is also a lot more easier to use now. You don't have to worry about having stacks ready to go. Once his skill four is up, you can instantly fire it off, which helps a ton of content like Yubaha. You don't have to worry about, oh man, my CFA got hit at 22. Don't have to worry about that ever again. The next unit we'll be looking at is Octo 5 Star. Now, Octo 5 Star is, it depends on what units you have. He could be S tier or he could be A tier. But Earth, Earth had a big change in the last six months from units like Fosteraga, Zeta, Naramea, Magasa, even My Hero 5 Star. They, they had a quite a big change in the last couple of months. So. I feel Octo has fallen down a little bit in terms of his prime status. He was, let's say, a year ago, where Octo was pretty much the go-to unit. He's still a good unit, depending if you don't have these units, right? If you don't have them, he's a great unit. A lot of the units are limited, so I can't expect every player to have them. So if you don't have them, he's an S-tier unit. But if you do have those units, he does fall down to A-tier. It just depends on what your box is full of, right? What units you have makes these units better or worse. That applies to every unit here. Like if you don't have a lot of good units, then your value for them goes up. If you do have a lot of good units, then your value for them goes down. That's how I feel about it. Personally, I have the better units. Um, so Octo 5 star for me, it's A tier. But for you, if you don't have the good ones, he could be S tier. So Now he does still have his skill one, which gives him massive damage boost. And to be honest, it'll probably become clutch for people in Nightmare 150, where you're gonna have a harder time capping. Octo will cap no problem. Even Nightmare 150, he's a cap. As long as his skill one's up, no problem. He does have the Earth attack up on his Ogi, which is pretty nice. Um, Earth does have a lot of units that can do Earth attack up, but just having an extra one on Ogi is not bad at all. His skill three is okay. Does increase the CA damage cap, so that's not bad at all. And his skill 4 does allow him to become a lot more Ogi generating um, after turn 10 turns. So, not bad. The next unit we'll be looking at is Neo 5 Star. Neo 5 Star is a S tier for me. He's a monster. Once you get to turn 10 and see pops up for skill 4 alone, that's like a massive amount of damage giving your team guaranteed TA and 50% bonus damage. That stacks with pretty much most buffs in the game. Yeah, it's crazy. It's pretty much Alanan, uh, Fairy, units like that. Her only problem with her is that she got to get turn 10. But once she gets turn 10, her damage triples. It's crazy. 
She t still has a really good buff on her skill too, which is not bad. Still has the coma, though, as I mentioned, coma becoming a lot less more valuable because of how content in the game is completely resisting it. So keep that in mind. And she gets the barrier on her skill 3, which does help a little bit, combined with the tuning, which lowers the damage you take. So it's not bad. But honestly, her skill 4 is stellar, and that, that alone puts her in S tier, in my opinion. And now we're onto the final unit, S or 5 star. And she's a B tier. She's so bad. No. <laughs> she's a monster, dude. <laughs> S or 5 star is the same situation as Neo. The unit is insane as a 5 star. Her skill 4 comes off, and it's just like, oh my lord. <laughs> Once her skill 4 goes off, it's oh my lord. If we're not even talking about her skill 3 and the skill 2 combo, that as well as a ton of damage. But just her skill 4, it's just like, oh my lord. <laughs> That's all, even Magna, it makes Magna look good. It's how good it is, her skill 4. She can save Magna by just firing it, firing it off, so... That's just definitely something you may want to invest into if you don't have her. She's a monster and she can really, really carry you, provided you're ready, provided you're ready to get to turn 10. <laughs> because you do got to get to turn 10 for her to really pop off. But that's about it with these five stars. Um, if you have any questions or any comments or anything, leave them in the, in the description and stuff. And I'll try to reply to them. This is a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um... I'm trying to look at it in different ways, right? Because it depends on your roster, right? A lot. A lot of this is just about where your roster at, um, on how valuable these units are. Like none of them are bad units, as in like they're unusable. Then they they can't even be used in your box. But a lot of them are more used than others. So it just depends on what you got. So uh, if you have any questions, though, just leave them in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope it helps somebody with making your five stars. And you're four stars, so later.